Hey, welcome. We're at 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 to 5 today for our devotional. Let's read it, then we'll think about it together. David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. So he became captain over them, and there were about 400 men with him. Then David went from there to Mizpah of Moab, and he said to the king of Moab, Please, let my father and mother come here with you till I know that what God will do for me. So he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the time that David was in the stronghold. Now the prophet Gad said to David, Do not stay in the stronghold, depart, and go to the land of Judah. So David departed and went into the forest of Hereth. So here we've got some interesting pieces. David uh, retreats to the cave of Adullam. He's uh, not over, he's, he's left the Philistia where he just barely had that kind of close call. And uh, word gets out. David is in certain location and all the people gather up to him. Now Saul might not have wanted it to turn out this way. It's kind of interesting. But what do you have? Everyone who's in distress, everyone who's in debt, everyone who's unhappy and discontented, they gather to him and suddenly, boom, David's got 400 guys. Could be a band of thieves. He could start in on a life of, uh, you know, stealing stuff. He could start a little uh, group there and, and um, rent out a group of, he could be a group of mercenaries. Uh, different things David could be doing, but you know what? He's, that's not his goal. David, because of Saul's uh, weird leadership style, he has created a whole bunch of discontented people. And boom, there they are. They're, they're, at David's, they're ready to be led by David. And so David prepares for his family, his, his older, uh, his parents. He has them uh, stowed away in Moab for a while. And all the time, this next business is going to be happening where David and Saul are chasing each other through the forest and all that. They're away in a safe location. Good for David. He's caring for his, his beloved parents. And then you notice something else very interesting at that fifth verse. There's a prophet in the midst. God sends his prophet, Gad. Gad is part of David's group here. And Gad tells David, I'm going to give you some direct guidance from, from God. I'm going to give you some direct insight here. Do this. Don't do this. Do this. Go to this place. And so, interesting how God is working to preserve David. God has provided somebody to his people, this little band of outcasts. God has provided somebody to help them go in the right pathway. It probably looks pretty grim for David. He's kind of an outcast. He's kind of living alone in the forest, more or less. And yet God sends him many people to be with him. God sends him uh, even a prophet for guidance. So God has his eye, even on a small group of people, a small, very small number. God has his eye on them for good. And you know what? Perhaps some of these uh, distressed people and, and, and unhappy people, perhaps some of them, have, have roots of bitterness or different things happening in their life. And God's going to, I think, use their experience with David uh, to bring them to a better place spiritually as well. So David needs to be careful not to descend to the lower levels. He's got to bring everybody up to that higher level. If you're a leader in Israel, you need to try to bring people up a bit higher, higher spiritually. I like that God is working. God is going to now bring people together around David and David's going to ultimately going to become king of Israel. But in the meantime, there's going to be some, some uh, adventures here in the forest, and we'll come on with those here starting tomorrow morning. Let's pause and pray together. Dear Father in heaven, even when we are a very small group, David's a very small group here, even in those kind of cases, it is true that you want to give us leadership. You want to provide us leaders, and here you've even given David the benefit of your prophet Gad. Thank you that David's a man who wants to know what your will is through your prophets, and he's willing to follow them. Without that, I'm sure that David would not have survived this next period of uh, trials and tribulations. So, Lord, when you send us a prophet to guide us, help us to be true to you. Help us to seek that guidance, to be glad you've sent it, and to listen and watch and obey where you send us to go. So now, Lord, uh, watch over us day by day. We might be a very large group, we might be a very small group, but may you watch over us so that you can achieve your purposes through our life and work at this time. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God be with you.